Okay, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And so far, as I talk and for beginning, we don't deserve on our hot, 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 hot. We know they miss them based on the top stories we day. And uh, the Izugu Chukudi just finished with us uh, looking at the newspaper and uh, the headlines we day and the things we need to know about them. Well, we move on to our next part of this uh, show. We get one better conversation, we won't get with one better individual. He named Natunji Andrews, now business analyst, and he also they work with us for Nigeria Info FM. In good day here to talk about uh, the state of the nation and uh, the other things we be involved after you know say COVID 19 don't they waiting waiting be the way forward Ogatunji, welcome to the show yeah good morning thanks for having me good, good morning, morning sir you're welcome you're welcome it does look like if we're starting to analyze the state of the nation judging we usually start off the show by asking how are you how are you you look well how very you, well sir? but we will see ask how are you <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm well. I'm well. It, uh, honest you look question. Are now. you I good? Can see you now. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. Right. So let's even uh, start from this uh, year because as it be now, let's like say 2020 now new new year for Nigeria. So now 2020 is here and the coronavirus pandemic hit the world. Ha! <sighs> A lot has changed. A lot has changed, and uh, a lot of people are still not sure the way forward. People don't know uh, how to, you know, to, to adapt. People don't know what new things to you know, get involved in. Industries are shut down. It hits entertainment. It hits businesses. It hits the economy at large. So let's even look at that and see how we can uh, uh, move forward from this. What do you think is the this, this, this situation right now, and what, do you, what would you say is our, you know, way out of these things or how we can, you know, live or survive in times like this? Um, okay, so I'll start from the fact that um, everybody, at least um, the government, the economic planning team, the economic uh, sustainability committee set up by the president, uh, chaired by the vice president, um, the National Bureau of Statistics, the Finance Ministry are all looking at the fact that there will be a possible recession for Nigeria before the end of the year. Um, what they are trying to look at right now is how they can curtail the effects of this recession. It's like it's clear. Uh, the numbers they see say that we will fall into a recession. So um, they're all trying to look at how to possibly make sure that we do not um, go into very terrible numbers. Um, so I, I've seen some um, calculations where if we uh, give a stimulus of about 3.2 trillion, um, the effects will be less than 1% uh, contraction. So what I'm trying to say without, you know, the, all that, I needed to put that out so that you, you kind of understand what it is. But what it means is that we have, it's like a ship and we're we are coming towards troubled waters. We're coming towards a storm because um, a lot of things are going to be coming to us. We've, we, we've, it looks like we've survived corona. Um, it doesn't look like it's totally gone, but it looks like we will be fine. But what is coming up ahead is that um, the economy is, in, is going to be in a terrible state from the fact that crude oil prices uh, and even the ability difficult thing, plus the fact that OPEC is asking us to cut our quotas I mean, you couldn't ask for a worst possible year for for a country as Nigeria, but it, it's good that we are planning and it's good that we are looking into the future. Okay, um, let's talk about this recession. Like you have stated, it is impending. So it's not a, a thing of whether or not it will happen. Chances are, the highest chances are that it will happen. Let's talk about what yes. it means for the individual, for the business, mm. and for the country at large. So let's start from the, um, um, the individual. So what it means, generally, a recession. And you know, I, I try to explain what um, GDP is and GDP means in terms of um, uh, funding for a lot of people. It's a situation whereby, um, because you know, in, in every economy, I'm connected to you, you're connected to me. Um, I get to hire somebody, I pay the person's salary. The person is able to use the salary, they, they get for me to go and pay their children's school fees. The school fees is the, the school uses the school fees to go and buy equipment. The people they buy the equipment from use it to go and buy food. We are all connected in an economy. So if there is a recession, meaning the government is not is is in a contracted space, businesses will be affected. When businesses are affected, 
the individuals like uh, you and I might get laid off. Um, and then it, it starts to affect our income. People will not be able to pay rent. People will not be able to pay, uh, pay school fees. Um, the number of jobs out there will be reduced. Um, and even the number of opportunities out there will be reduced. So first of all, for the individual, it's going to be a difficult time. For companies, it's going to be a very difficult time, but companies will survive because companies would uh, immediately, the first thing they're thinking of is how to lay off people. So to at least, you know, survive the, the trying time. So they will survive as long as they have a sustainable uh, um, model to begin with. But for the country, um, I think they're already preparing. They're already looking for ways to borrow the money. Um, and I think we will survive. But for me, I, I, I think the most critical that will be hit by this recession is the individuals. And I think they need to start planning now. If Nigeria is already planning now, I think individuals need to start planning and just putting aside a little money aside for, for that time when it comes. Going from what you just said about the country, let's mm -hmm. talk about debt and debt servicing. Um, we read today about how the former vice president of Nigeria, Elijah Atuku Abubakar, had stated that Nigeria is just incurring more debt for its generation, its future generation, that they will be unable to pay. And he stated that what we're currently doing is debt servicing, sort of repaying a token of the interest that has incurred on our debt, as opposed to, and just ignoring the principal sum. What's your take on borrowing and so far our borrowing as a country? Borrowing is terrible right now. Um, in the first quarter of the year, um, because our revenue was really bad, um, we saw that uh, we were paying back, um, uh, we were servicing our debt with about 99% of our revenue, the money we made. So imagine we made a hundred naira in the first three months of the year. We paid in debt servicing 99 naira. So you can imagine how it was difficult to do other things, like even, uh, you know, sort uh, coronavirus, uh, pay salaries and the rest. You can just imagine that we had to borrow to do all of that. Um, uh, and and it's, 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 the, it's the situation whereby, with the recession coming ahead, if crude oil prices continue to go at these levels, I, I, I worry, I, you know, and we've been saying this for a couple of years, you know, Nigeria is just on the path where you know, we're just hoping for the best, you know, tomorrow will be better, tomorrow will be better, tomorrow will be better. And, and you know, it's like we're not, we're not really planning for, you know, a possible scenario of all things going bad. Nobody woke up in 2020 expecting that 2020 was going to turn out to be the way it was. But look at, look at it. And this is why economies plan. This is why countries and governments look into the future and try to be sustainable. The government in Nigeria has continuous, continu continuously expanded um, the recurrent expenditure. Uh, the National Assembly has cons consistently expanded recurrent expenditure. And now we're in the position where the chickens have come home to roost. Um, I pray it doesn't get worse, because I don't know who is going to borrow us money after this. Um, looking at our revenue position, looking at our uh, debt position, and looking at our ability to be able to repay that money, I don't think anybody's going to borrow us money in the future. And, and if, you, if you don't get money, the economy doesn't move. So it's like a chicken and egg situation. We're in a bad situation. We need more money. They're, you know, it's either going to be given to us at a very, very expensive rate or nobody's going to give us at all. But the cocoa of the batter is that we manage this economy pro poorly and we've gotten ourselves to a very, very bad place. Now, still speaking about um, the loans and borrowing of money, uh, we know that uh, a lot of small businesses actually, you know, find uh, loans to, you know, kickstart their businesses, to keep it afloat and things like that. Now, in a time like this, would you advise that uh, the small businesses still go, af go after loans and, uh, you know, things, credits from institutions seeing to keep their business afloat or try as much as possible to just, you know, reorganize themselves the way they are and still find ways to survive in these times? What is your advice on this? Um, so I would say first, first things first, in any crisis, what you want to do is reevaluate your cost and, you know, you want to cut out all the excesses, everything that is not important, cut out right now. Mm -hmm. Um, your TGIFs on Friday, cut them out. Every single thing you can cut out from your business, cut them out right now. But that said, if you can get a loan, I doubt you will. Um, but, but if you can get a loan as a business now, get it. 
get it. Um, it could be the difference between your business surviving or dying. Um, and, and I want to just point out a few <clears throat> a few things. Um, one of the uh, one of the major oil companies in the world declared its first loss in over 50 years. Um, aviation companies have have started to uh, look at the uh, UK government for bailouts. Um, companies across the world are shutting down, going bankrupt. It will not be unique if your business fails. It will not be like it, it, the world will not stop. It will not be a major news event if your business fails because businesses are failing every single day across the world right now. So if you can get a loan, get it. It just might be the difference between you surviving and you know uh, uh, going under. And after you've collected it, we'll, we'll sort out how you pay, especially because you might even have opportunities to be able to grow your revenue at this time. Because one, one amazing thing about times like this is that there will be opportunities. There will be opportunities. People are looking for things to do. It, it, the amazing thing right now is that now more than ever, there are people who are willing to invest their money. It's, it's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody is so scared about the future now that they are like, ah, this little money that I've been hoarding before, let me look for a way to you know, be multiplying it a little by little by little because I don't even know if my job is safe. Um, so, yes, there will be opportunities, but you need to just make sure that you get out there. Uh, if you can get the loan, get them as low as possible. The government is giving out a few loans, so, you know, explore those opportunities. Um, I shared the, 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 uh, uh, the, the website for the government loan, um, I think, the last time I was on here. So you might want to check that out again and, and you know, just, just take advantage of those things. So, would, do you have like the website uh, to the top of your head so you can um, share it, or we could get it from me, your let me, social let me media? Let me check. I, I, I could just—it's the federal mortgage. Or in the uh, event that you don't have it here, we can redirect people to your page mm -hmm. so that uh, can check or before the end of the show. Yes, yes, yes. Here. I'll put it. I'll put it up on my uh, stories again uh, okay. on Instagram so that you can just check it out. Okay. Um, it's 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 just go there. It's 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 a bit cumbersome but one of the things i must point out that the interest rate is nine percent nine percent flat compared to a bank loan you'll be getting a bank loan at maybe about 21 22 percent so you already know that you're ahead and there's, there's a three months moratorium on this so you you don't start paying back the interest for the first three months so it gives you a bit of ample time to be able to you know coordinate yourself so it, it's if you can take advantage of this you know if you have to sit down on that portal day and night to make sure that your your application goes through please it's worth it okay the last time that nigeria experienced the recession was in 2016 if i'm correct and we started to see some sort of positive growth by q2 2017 now we're in second quarter of 2020 and predictions are that we will be entering into a lockdown into a recession that will last into 2021 even the imf reports that it might be the worst that we've experienced in 30 years what are some of the ways in which we can get out of this we know that for the longest time we've solely rely relied on oil and uh we're seeing that uh, there's a great fall in oil prices what are the things that the practical steps that we think that the governor or from your perspective as a business analyst that the government can take into uh, consideration to get us out of this fix that we're already getting we've already gotten ourselves into um so you must let's look at it from um government revenue um one of the most unfortunate things about nigeria's revenue structure is that it is only a, a lot of it comes from crude oil. Our taxes, our revenue comes from crude oil. So whenever there's a shock to crude oil, it affects everybody. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a very wide tax base. So we have lots of um, entrepreneurs, small and medium scale enterprises who are informal and not captured in the tax um, net. Um, I think this is an opportunity for the government to do one of two things. Um, if it can find money, and I know it can, um, it can stimulate by giving money to small and medium scale enterprises. But by doing that, it uh, will force the small and medium scale enterprises to um, regularize their, um, their, their legal structure so that they are properly captured in the tax base. 
So you are giving them money to go and do business and giving money to the place where the economy that it is most useful and it can create a bit of a multiplier effect. But also, you are also, you know, getting the details of people that you can tax easily. So, for instance, if you have the mom and pops uh, enterprises that is down the road, you give them maybe a hundred or two hundred thousand naira, but then you bring them into the tax net, and then you are able to tax them at the end of the year. But that, for me, is trying to, you know, stimulate the economy while you are thinking into the future and trying to restructure how you collect your your taxes and how your revenue is structured as a country. Because we need to start um, seeing income from our country as uh, from um, income tax as against from commodity uh, uh, sales uh, or, 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 or crude oil sales so that it is a bit simpler. Um, because, I mean, some of us still work, uh, some of us still pay taxes, but imagine if the entire country that is still active were paying their taxes the government will not feel as much of a pinch as it's feeling right now. But um, I think this is a way to go. This is like a, a very smart way for them to be able to kill one bird, uh, two birds with one stone and, and, and take Nigeria uh, into the future. So you stimulate and you capture people into your tax net. Now, speaking about taxing, uh, people still are of the opinion that they are paying tax. It's not being used. They can't see what it's being used for. And that alone does not even, you know, um, stimulate people to want to even pay tax. They, they, they try as much as possible to avoid it because they say, if I'm paying for it, I'm paying tax on this, I don't have light, I don't have good roads, water is not flowing, uh, all this and that and that. So there's sort of a disconnect in this process. So now, where do you think uh, we need to look into and how do you think this can be, can be controlled? I agree that there's a social contract that is missing uh, between the people and the government. The social contract is one that has um, um, failed too, too many times. Um, but as citizens, so I want to start with us as, as citizens to begin with. Citizens need to look at it from the perspective of um, if it is good for Nigeria, it will be good for us. I mean, that, that's, that's the basic understanding of it. Yeah. But also, I also think that um, there is a, a discussion to be had about the fact that um, a lot of Nigerians don't really see themselves in the economic discourse of Nigeria. So when Nigeria, for instance, says we're going to borrow money and we're, um, uh, we're a social, social number in debt, um, they see it as it's Abuja's problem. It is, it, it is the people in Abuja, that small office, that is their problem. They don't see it as a collective, as a Nigerian problem, because a lot of us do not pay taxes. So it does look like, um, how, how, how will I be bothered about it? How does it concern me? Um, so I feel that we need to look at that social contract as we need to participate in the building of Nigeria so that we can have a little bit more um, uh, um, uh, mouth in the conversation, quote unquote. But from the government side, um, you can't demand money from people you've not supported. You can't demand money from people you've not helped to create infrastructure, you've not helped to uh, uh, put uh, the basic amenities and structures on ground. So I would advise that the government needs to find money quickly. Um, and this is in the place of the money it's looking to stimulate the economy. As you are stimulating the economy, you have to think about creating structures for businesses. You have to think about a way that makes businesses feel that you have their best interests at heart. It's not going to be an easy task, especially because a lot of people will just believe that um, the money might be stolen and put into other, uh, uh, other um, private uses as a gift for the country. But you have to still try. You have to still give your very best to try and make sure that there's infrastructure. Um, and, and, you know, show them that, you know, this is the little we've been able to do. Yes, we have challenges, but uh, we've been able to achieve this. And, uh, you know, we believe that if we are transparent with you, we can still do a lot more. Okay, uh, Tuji, before I let you go, I think it's very important that I ask this question. We've seen this prophecy of doom and gloom. We've talked about the way out for businesses, the way out for the country, the government. Let's talk about the person, the individual watching this, who has a job in 95, or a regular job. The individual watching this, who 
owns a business, the individual watching this who runs a one-man business, and the individual watching this that has no job but is hearing that Nigeria is gearing up for a recession, what practical tips can we give to them to prepare themselves for this next wave? Um, the first thing I will say is, um, my first advice to you is that you have to get through this. It's going to be a very difficult time in, in the months to come. Difficult for the fact that there won't be free cash to, available. Uh, even if you had a skill and you had a job, it might be harder to come by. Uh, people might decide to cut their own grass, fix their own plumbing and things like that. Um, but what I want to first say is, every money you have right now is important. Every single money you have right now is important. I, I know that um, motivational speakers tell people like, um, you know, if they do not pay you your value, walk away. This is not that time. This is not that time at all. This is the time where you basically make sure that you have every opportunity to earn and you keep it, keep that money safe, safe away somewhere. It might be little, but it's it's going to add up to something because the times are that you might just not, you, you might lose your job and you might keep it, but you might also keep your job at a reduced salary. So what, what then happens? So you have to start thinking about all the worst case uh, scenarios. Yes. Also, there will be nobody to borrow from. So that, that scares me more than most because everybody will be telling and thinking about themselves most importantly. So at this point, I think save, save, save. Don't spend on frivolities. Think about yourself. Think about the, the, the future um, and do everything you can to earn. Safe, safe, it's safe, but is money. investing also a good idea now mm. for individuals because there are still a lot of people that come and say, we'd like you to invest, and I've told them, leave me alone. How much money do I have there? So just put Save this one now interest. and get interest in three months. Put now and get in uh, six months. Let me tell you something. Mm. Let me tell you something. If, you've not, if you were not prepared for this recession, don't move now. The people that are prepared for the recession will take advantage of the recession. If you were not prepared already, don't start preparing now. Just your, your thoughts must be survival. There will be another one. There, the recessions are cyclical. They come every uh, eight years or so, or six years. We've just happened to have our own very is more regular now. Yeah, so, but it will come back again. So you have to prepare for the next one. But this one, your thought must be survival. If you do not know how to invest, don't go near it for now. Keep your money, keep your gunpowder dry. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we've already started seeing is that most of the investment companies have started defaulting. Most of the companies that, you know, tell you, uh, you something, something guaranteed, if you put your money in this, is insured by this, they've already started defaulting. I, I have a few cases that have come to report to me like that, that we've taken the matter up. They've started defaulting. This is not the time to give your money to anybody because they also are thinking about survival and they are putting out their marketers out there Go and bring more money, go and bring more money in the hope that the money they bring will keep them afloat through this time. Do not be the person that they'll use your money to get through the recession while you are struggling. Keep your money dry. If you do not know how to invest, don't do it at all. Keep your money dry. Please, I beg you. Hmm. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Tunji. This has been a very enlightening Quite scary, but no. very enlightening conversation. <laughs> uh, because he, he, they say he who fails to plan, plans to fail. So yes. it's important that True. we know what the enemy is that lies ahead so we can prepare adequately. Uh, yes. How can people, I know you give nuggets on how people can prepare themselves for this. You give free information on your page um, on how people can ensure that they prepare themselves for this. I mean, just from your page, I first saw that I should not invest now. And I pursued all the people that were pursuing me for investment. So how can people follow you up and keep up with what you do? Um, so you can follow me on Instagram at Tunji Andrews. I, I put up uh, uh, posts almost every day called Dear Entrepreneur. Um, and basically it's just tips. And you, you might want to just scroll down to all of them and see some. I've, I've really put out some, you know, things that I feel are amazing. Even myself, I'm shocked sometimes at, at some of those words. Um, so, yes, it might help you prepare for this time. But I will also do um, some um, Instagram lives in the future. So just let's get through this together because we're all through it. We're going through it together. 
you and I. It's not just you. It's we're all in it together. And so you promised us a link. All of us. The link to the, the loans. Link you to said you loan, put, yes. put on your story. So for businesses that are looking to access. Yes, yes, I will not forget that. I, thank you for reminding me. All I'll right. put that up just, just after I go. Okay. Thank yes. you very much for joining us.